I am the best Pokemon. Okay, don't get me wrong, buddy, but I I'm going to use you as a bike. What? Who do you think you are? Look, it's not your fault. There's just so many others. And after we shared so many sandwiches. You stole my sandwiches! This is entirely because of the sandwiches, isn't it? Maybe. Ladies, gentlemen, and trainers of all ages, today we're going to talk about something simple but important. Something that may affect your journey through the story is if you want to just be strong above all else, you should catch these Pokemon pretty much as soon as you see them. But for the most part, what this is important for is the end game and beyond. Strong Pokemon. For PvP, for Terra Raids. Of course, any Pokemon can be strong, but these are the Pokemon that when statted properly, itemized well, and put in the right situations will just be absolutely head and shoulders above the rest. It's time for the list of the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. It's important to note that while I will be ranking them against each other, it sort of depends on what your goals are or what you're trying to do with them. Some people rate bulkiness higher than offensive power or vice versa, but for one reason or another, no matter how you order them, these 10 Pokemon are just absolutely not so strong. Without further ado, let's begin with the honorable mentions. Dondozo and Tatsugiri as a combo. Very specifically, this is very silly in doubles battles. Tatsugiri's ability commander makes a jump into the mouth of Don Dozo and essentially just double every single one of its stats, turning it into an absolute monster. This is really strong in itself, but if you then put the poison orb item on Tatsugiri, it will badly poison itself first. Normally, once it hops into Don Dozo's mouth, you are locked to having only one Pokemon out, even in the doubles battle, but that Pokemon is double the strength. However, once the poison eventually kills Tatsugiri, you can throw out a new Pokemon and still have Don Dozo with all of the buffs that double strength, it's just a really solid combo. Next up is Pomot, the electric fighting type. This thing has decent type coverage and some good abilities to choose from, but the main reason that this is getting mentioned is an ability called Revival Blessing. This is a one-use move that literally just revives one member of your party. Before this being added to the game, there was no way to revive Pokemon in PvP, and so that's a really massive deal as a result. Of course, that is big for a whole slot on your team, but the Pokemon is decent in general even aside from that, and if you have one member of your team that's just better than the rest, this can give them another go. With that then, let's break into the actual list itself with number 10. A wall! Ting Lu. This is one of the legendaries that you can find by breaking the seals around the map, and it is silly good for one specific purpose. It is tanky as all hell. It has an insanely high health pool, as well as a really good defense. Its special defense is a bit lower, but combined with the HP pool and its innate ability, it makes up for it no problem. That ability just automatically lowers the special attack of every Pokemon other than Ting Lu by 25%. On top of this, it actually has a decent attack stat, and of course because of the high defense, you can use a move like Body Press to just chunk a opponent's health down. And it is a ground dark Pokemon which gives it some decent type coverage to counter with stab moves as well. On top of that, it has extremely low speed, so on a trick room team in PvP, you could definitely make use of that to make it go first. Number 9. Mousehold, which by the way is one of my favorite names for a Pokemon. This one may sound silly, but yes, this little family of mice is just super strong. The main reason for this is their signature move that they learned at level 53, Population Bomb. What this does is hit the target 10 times in a row for 20 damage at 90 accuracy. If we take that at face value, it means you'll do essentially a 180 power move, because logically those numbers mean that you will miss one. However, you can stick a wide lens item on it, increase the accuracy to 99%, and then suddenly it becomes 200 damage. Then you can get an ability patch to unlock its hidden ability called Technician, which is a one and a half times boost to the damage of moves with 60 or less power. This turns it into 30 power per hit, or in total, a 300 power attack. Does that sound ludicrous? That's because it absolutely is. Number eight. Forward cannons ready. Armor Rouge. This Pokemon is pretty tanky against physical damage while also having a really good special attack. It is fire and psychic mix, which gives it really good tight matchups, and you can even tear it into grass with it without having grass's big major weakness of fire due to the flash fire skill the Pokemon has. Armor Cannon, its signature move, is essentially close combat, but for fire type, and it only lowers on one defense stat instead of both, so very strong. And then it also can get Expanding Force. This move has a lot of use whenever you have psychic terrain up, especially in a doubles battle situation where this move will then hit both opponents with the terrain match, as well as getting a bigger than normal damage bonus from it. Number seven, Roaring Moon. One of the Paradox Pokemon, Roaring Moon is quite strong in general. It is dark and dragon type, which gives it good access to some powerful moves with stab being applicable. It's reasonably tanky with decent HP and special defense, but mostly the strength here is it is 
pretty speedy, letting it go first in most matchups, and it has ridiculously high attack. Like, the base attack stat is high, but of course it has the ability Protosynthesis that all these Scarlet Paradox Pokemon have, which boosts its highest stat by 50% when in harsh sunlight or with the energy booster item equipped. This means that you can just force your attack stat to be 50% higher than it already is in every encounter on purpose. That is a free one-stage attack boost that also stacks with all the other attack boosts. It's just a nuts ability, so having that ability on a Pokemon that otherwise is already strong, of course, makes it significantly stronger. Number six. Salty. So salty! Garganackle. This lovable pile of salt has been taking the game by storm. His tankiness is insane, really high HP and defense stats, but on top of that, he can use Iron Defense as a move which raises its defense stat two stages in one go, making it even more of an impenetrable wall. Then its attack is decent, and you can use Body Press to take advantage of just how high the defense this Pokemon has and just crush your opponents. Not to mention, it also learns Recover to heal up half of its health in one turn. It's just a near-perfect tank. Of course, it also has its signature move Salt Cure, which if you know, you know. This move can make a level 30 party kill a level 60 Pokemon with minimal issues. You could do it with a level 24 Pokemon and the rest of your party being level 1, it wouldn't matter. It applies a debuff that does health percentage damage at the end of every turn, which is just silly for obvious reasons. In certain content, this will be less useful than others for obvious reasons, as it really draws out a fight, but it makes it so against a singular Pokemon, even when significantly stronger than you, you can win if it goes long enough. Number. Five. Fluttermane. Another Paradox Pokemon, but this time we have a bit of a glass cannon. Specifically, this Pokemon has low HP and defense, but super high special attack, super high special defense, and super high speed. It can absolutely mess your enemies up, and interestingly, as far as its base stats go, those three stats are actually identical at base, which plays into the fun of the Protosynthesis ability that I talked about earlier. As I said, it boosts your highest stat, so there's actually a lot of variance in Fluttermane depending on where you put your EVs and your nature, so you can decide which of those three stats will be affected by the ability. You can choose special attack to make yourself even more of a cannon, special defense to make yourself super tanky to special attacks, or speed to make sure that no other Pokemon will go before you. On top of that, it has great type coverage being ghost and fairy, it gets access to some strong moves, and they all do loads of damage because of its special attack stat. Number 4. We have a duck, a cat, and a lizard. Quaquavel and Meowskarada. Sorry, Skeledurge, but you are a bit behind these other two. The superior of the two here is probably Meowskarada but they are both worth talking about and I didn't want to give them separate entries. Starting with the duck then, he has a really good attack stat, but none of the other stats are really anything to write home about. It can use Wave Crash, which is a really good water attack. It can use Sword Dance, which is a two-stage attack buff in one turn, really solid whenever it is possible. It is Fighting and Water type, which gives it really good type coverage, and then it also has its signature move, Aqua Step, which does pretty good damage while also buffing its speed. In a world where going first and one-shotting means you don't even get hit, this is a fantastic thing to build throughout a multi-Pokemon battle. As for the cat, this is all honed in around the signature move, Flower Trick. This attack is a guaranteed crit that never misses, and it has 70 power. Critical hits are an extra 50% damage, so you may as well read that as this move is 105 power. On top of that, crits ignore screens, and they ignore your target's defense up stat boost as well as ignoring any negative attack boost that you may have been given by your opponent. This move is just incredibly powerful all on its own, but then it also has access to tons of good attacks due to its typing like Sucker Punch to always go first in a turn, or even Trick Room if you are doing doubles matches. Number 3. Goldengo. You may not have seen this Pokemon yet because of its ridiculous unlock requirement, but this is the evolution of Gimme Ghoul. Its main advantage is that it has an insanely high special attack stat, and it is a Steel Ghost type, which means it not only is resistant to a hell of a lot of things, but it also gives it some great move access as well. Its signature move is called Make It Rain, a 120 power Steel type special attack that lowers your special attack by one stage. It is really strong combined with the special attack of the Pokemon itself, and then to make it up for it, this creature can also learn Nasty Plot, which raises your special attack by two stages in one turn. So put those two things together, and you have an absolute nuke Pokemon. As you can see, this random person just doing to a five-star terror raid that I was in. Number two, Chien Pao. To start off, its ability is just insanely good. It lowers the defense of every other Pokemon than itself by 25% just for free. It has good defense on its own, it's tanky enough, and it has a really high attack stat too. It does have a double weakness to fighting types, but absolutely nothing else is much of a threat to it. It can use Swords Dance for a two-stage attack boost, and it has some really good attacks to hit really hard with once it's done these attack boosts. This one isn't very complex, it just has the ability to absolutely body other Pokemon because of its own ability and the moves that it can get. Number one. I am a hero! 
Palafin. This Pokemon may be unassuming at first glance, but that's until you activated its ability, Zero to Hero. If you put this Pokemon in battle, then swap it out, then swap it back in, it will transform into an absolute menace. Its BST will raise to 650, which is pretty much legendary level, and its attack stat becomes absolutely monstrous. All of its defenses and HP become enough to tank loads of damage. It is a move that has priority, meaning it hits first in the turn order, that also is a punch, also gets same type attack bonus, and so you can use the Punching Glove item with it for a 50% damage boost, and it's just an insanely good combo. On top of that, it has access to Wave Crash, which is just a really high damage physical water move with a bit of recoil. It is a great attack, and when you have that attack set that Palafin has, it just, it's nasty good. And that just about does it, everyone. The 10 strongest Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, with a couple of honorable mentions as well. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of the top tier Pokemon available in this generation so far. Let me know your thoughts, of course, and if you think there are other Pokemon worthy of more recognition, then feel free to wax lyrical about them in the comments down below. Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye